power, pride, and hedonism. Yeah, that's a, that's a, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, if you make your sexual identity paramount, it's like, <laughs> you've identified the I with, with the impulse, essentially, with the whim, right? Because sex is a whim, like, obviously. Now, does it rule? Well, what, what is it that you are if sex rules? You're the wolf, that's for sure. Oh, that's for sure. And a wolf to yourself, too. So, you know, when you see this ambivalence on the left, because on the one hand, anything goes and all forms of sexuality are to be, like, celebrated, mm. worshipped, essentially, because celebration and worship are the same thing. Yet sex is so dangerous, especially between, like, members of a young heterosexual pair, that absolutely every single bit of it has to be regulated right to the last word. It's like, well, you, licentiousness breeds tyranny. That's why the whore of Babylon is on the great scarlet beast of the state at the end of time. Tell me exactly what that means when you break it down. Well, imagine that when masculinity degenerates, the state pathologizes. The patriarchy mm -hmm. pathologizes. Well, what happens to females? They pathologize too. Well, where? Do, how do they pathologize? In the direction of disinhibited sexuality. So, 35% of internet traffic is pornographic. Yeah, but that's not driven by women. That's driven by men. It's driven by bloody women too. Whoa. Parading themselves. Absolutely. It might be like there's no shortage of electronic pimps and desperate engineers, let's <laughs> say, but that doesn't mean the women who engage in that are innocent by any stretch of the imagination. They're, they're, uh, they're doing the same thing with their sexuality that, the, that, the, that people granted the talent of intelligence do with their, with their, with their gift. Look at me. It's like, no. No, wrong, wrong. Those women online displaying themselves, they're succubi. They're not human. You're a fool if you think that's human. You're a fool. At minimum, it's a machine-human hybrid. A woman doesn't appear in a million places at the same time. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, that's not a woman. Yeah, what do you make of the OnlyFans Ooh. dynamic between men and women? Uh, the more I look at this, the more I'm getting freaked out. There was a, a woman named... Well, you have to stop looking then. Yeah, Isn't that well, <laughs> looking at it truly through a research lens, but yeah. uh, Belle Delphine, I believe is her name. Uh, back in 2020, she sold 10 million pounds worth of her bath water. <laughs> oh, that's and, perfect. Yeah. The Whore of Babylon has a cup full of liquid, by the way, in gold, a gold cup full of liquid that she offers the world. Really? Absolutely. 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 Look at how wonderful this is. It's actually, what does it say in the book of Revelations? It's filled with the filth of her abominations. God, perfect. So, so what is that? It's people wanting to consume that thing they can't have, that they have Definitely. idolized? Of course. Of course. It's, it, it's, it's people wanting to consume the thing that is denied to them because they hid their light under a bushel. Because they hid, uh, they hid who they could become yes. from themselves and never pursued it. Sure, and so they're not attractive to themselves or anyone else. Absolutely. Holy shit! Okay, oh, so yes. hold on. Oh yes, that's for sure. Oh yes, brutal, brutal. brutal so you've got brutal. women uh, ascending to a position of power they're on with a throne. that weird dynamic of postmodernism. Uh, they've been given a gift of being able to be persuade men through their mm -hmm. beauty to yeah. do what they will to get the attention that they want mm -hmm. now as a mechanical hybrid they're able to appear in tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions sit of on, places sit on the chests of men and take their essence from them <laughs> and then men are hiding their potential away from themselves Partly which also they're punished for yeah i was going to say but, but that then that gives them an excuse for not doing it because mm. they think well i'm going to the young guys let's say who decide to be useless you know some of it's genuine response to not being encouraged and to being punished some of it is but some of it it's pretty convenient it's like you don't have to put your cross on your shoulder mm. it's like no one wants me to do that anyways. It's like, well, yeah, that, that's always been the case. And I mean, in some ways, you know, there's, there's new impediments to 
striding forward confidently, but there's always been impediments. You know, it's so interesting. So I, uh, I train anybody that will listen uh, that you need to have beliefs in your life. And since facts are overwhelming, it's not about recognizing what's true. It's about recognizing what's useful is how I think of it. Uh, so you have a set of beliefs, you have a set of values, so you have hierarchy, what useful matters to me. Useful in relationship to the right end. That's Correct, the, that's a thousand percent, which is why yeah. I always lead with, you have to have a goal and that goal needs to be honorable. Yeah. So you've got well, beliefs. Well, you see, so the thing is, that's where your God lies. Th your this, God this lies is where I'm in going. The end, well, your God lies in the ineffable of in the ineffable extent of what you regard as useful. Yes. So imagine that useful tilts in a in a direction. The sum total of all that would of all that would be most properly useful. Mm. The essence of that, that's the God. That's the implicit God. Yeah, I'm realizing I have built from the ground up a system that is designed to do all the things that religion does. It's really interesting. This to me is it's fascinating because whenever you discover the same thing from multiple different mm. disciplines, you can be pretty sure you're converging mm. on the truth because everybody's just going, what actually works? Uh, but the last thing, the last part of my cocktail is rules. So you need rules in your life. Basically, there need to be things that you don't do. Um, mm. I'm no, that's, that's good. That's good. That's exactly right. That's, mm. that's where conscious. So you can imagine the spirit of God in the Old Testament makes himself manifest in two forms, calling and conscience. And conscience is that, what mm -hmm. you just described. It's like the guardrails. It's like you're going off the path, you know? So there's fences and warnings on the conscience side. But it's the same thing, and it's the dynamic between, so this is what happens in the movie Pinocchio. So Pinocchio is called out into the world. His father is benevolent, a benevolent creator, that's mm -hmm. Geppetto. He's called out into the world to make himself manifest, to realize himself, to become real. And there's two things that attract him. He wants to go out and learn and have his adventure. That's the calling. And, but it, that has to be allied with the conscience. And the reason for that is the calling alone gets him in trouble. Like, first of all, it, it entices him to becoming a narcissistic, psychopathic, manipulative actor. That's when he's on stage, right? Then it entices him into lying to get away with things and to get what he wants. So that's another extension, that manipulation. Then it entices him to become neurotic enough so that he can take a permanent holiday. Then he goes to Pleasure Island where he can engage in hedonism. That's where the slavers are, right? And so he needs, that's what, that's what just the calling alone, you know, will take him places that are attractive but not appropriate. You need a conscience along for the ride and that's Jiminy Cricket. Mm. Right. And Jiminy Cricket is what bugs you. Exactly. Yes. And so that's one of the places you can find your destiny is in what bothers you. There's going to be an array of things that make themselves manifest to you as callings of your conscience. Those are problems. Those are your problems. Why is that your problem? It's like, well, can you stop thinking about it? Does it bug you all the time? Well, hey, there you go. That's your destiny. Mm. Right. Where does this all go? You've got Canada has declined economically. You guys are now making 60% of what Americans are making. China God, is- we can do worse than that. With oh, work. Jesus, let's hope not. Uh, China is watching everything everybody does. They're way beyond 1984. Mm -hmm. 2024 in the US is, uh, it's terrifying. The election, does it actually build up to civil war? I don't know. Yep, UK. Yeah. You've got conflict, Russia, Ukraine. You've got conflict, Israel. You've got the uh, farmers Gaza. revolt in Europe. Yeah, like mm -hmm. where does this go? Uh, it depends on how many of us shoulder our crosses and walk uphill. I I really mean that. Like, we're at that point. Wake up, figure out which side you're on. If you were a betting man, mm -hmm. what odds do you give um, U.S. Civil War? What odds do you give World War Three? Well, we, huh. we're already in World War III, so I'd give that 100%. How far will it go? Depends on how stiff-necked we are, mm. right? So the Egyptian tyrant is visited by, is it 10 plagues? The last plague is the destruction of the future itself. That's the death of the firstborn. So, you know, it depends on how hard we have to be hit before we wake up. And there's no end to that. You know, I mean, God destroys the whole world in a flood. 
you know, that never happened. It's like, how about it's happening all the time? How about it's happened forever? It's happening now. It will happen forever. How high does the water have to rise? Till people learn. And what does it mean to learn? Well, this is why I'm a psychologist, not a politician. Or a theologian, to whatever degree that I lay pretensions to that. Someone concerned with spiritual matters, let's say. Psychological matters. Redemption is a matter of individual determination. So that's why I operate at the big level of the individual. How far will we have to go? Depends on how many sins you decide to continue harboring. How are you connected? How is that decision connected to the destiny of the world? We all bear the world on our shoulders. How, how can that be true? Here's one way of thinking about it. How much better would the people around you be if you were better? Some, obviously. What's the ultimate extent of that? What if you were everything you could be? That's what you're called upon to be. You're called upon to be everything you can be. Why? <laughs> Not least because the <laughs> try getting through the world without doing it. Then you'll end up in the position of Cain. You didn't offer your best. You'll be rejected by man, woman, and God, and yourself. And then what? Then you're bitter. Then you're fratricidal. Then you're murderous. Then you're genocidal. Then the flood comes. Or you erect the Tower of Babel. It's always the same. And now you can see it. Like, it's just right there. Why? Because it's fa happening so fast. If you like that clip, check out the full powerful episode here, and I'll see you there.